Thank you for your kind introduction, and I'd like to appreciate the Silicon Valley Forum and NEDO give me a chance to have a presentation in this conference. I'm Atsushiya Suda from Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry of Japan, and I'm in charge of robotics policy in Japan. Today, I'd like to explain an overview of Japan's new robot strategy drawn up in 2015 and current policies and measures in accordance with this strategy. First of all, I explain this strategy. In May 2014, the, in the OECD Ministerial Council, Council meeting, the Japanese Prime Minister proposed that Japan will create a new industrial revolution through the use of robots. This was the beginning of Japan's current initiative in robotics area. After the council, the Prime Minister held the first meeting of the Robot Revolution Realization Council at the Prime Minister's office in September 2014. Following six meetings, the new robot strategy was formulated and released in February 2015. This is the abstract of new robot strategy in Japan. We said the robot revolution intense in five years implementation period started in fiscal year 2015, and the following initiatives have been promoted. First of all, the government and private sector investment in projects related to robots amounting to 100 billion yen in total by 2020. And secondly, we will expand robot market scale to 2.4 trillion yen annually, which is four times as much as the current level. And thirdly, we will install a new robot test field in Fukushima Prefecture, which I will explain more detail in later. And fourthly, we will facilitate innovation and accelerate public implementation through the World Robot Summit, and also I will explain later. And also we set five priorities area First one is the manufacturing area, and the second one is the service area. And the third one is the nursing and medical care area, and the fourth one is the agricultural area. And the last one is the infra infrastructure and the counter disaster measure area. Those five areas is uh, uh, Japan's priority area to introduce the robotics technology. And in each five area, we set targets and key performance indicator in those areas such as, for example, in manufacturing area and service area, we will improve labor productivity by 2% or more by a robotics technology and strengthen the competitiveness of domestic locations. Under this strategy, our ministry has several menu to support the development and the introduction of robotics to the society. At first stage, we support the technology. We support early seeds of robotics and AI technology, shown in the blue arrow. And at the next stage, in the green arrow, we support the technology which we're able to put on the market within three years. And then we will support the introduction and the demonstration of robots applied to the real situation in manufacturing and service fields. Also, we support the system integrator to develop the system because the robot system integrator is a key player to introduce the robots to small and medium enterprises and also other non-robot friendly organizations. And these are the examples of robot demonstration project in Japan. We spread robots to various fields in addition to the manufacturing field such as food production field. In case one, we introduce a parallel link robot, alleviates part of the required handwork. And also in case three, we apply twin armed robots and automation machines to sensitive work, which will process with tweezers to assemble a few millimeters of micro pattern coils instead of using conventional handwork by human workers. These are the typical work in the small and medium enterprises 
in manufacturing industry in Japan. Also, we conduct Reform 2020 project, which will create showcases of robotics utilized in public space in 2020. These are the concrete examples. In Tokyo International Airport, Haneda, uh, guide services and cleaning and transport robots were demonstrated to operate under actual service situations as Haneda Robotics Lab. And also in some shopping malls, in information and guide services and cleaning robots were demonstrated last year. We plan to expand service types conducted by robots by 2020. And we think this area is very important to introduce the robotics technology. We think it would be important that robots and human beings could work together in various situations. One of the big potential collaboration areas is the nursing care area, where the task of humans are very hard. The pace of aging in Japan is expected to enter a phase that no other country in the world has yet experienced. Asian countries and the world will face the aging of population as a common issue. Under this situation, METI and the Minister of Health, Labor and Welfare have specified five priority areas which have great need in nursing care and jointly develop the nursing care robots. The prioritized areas are, the first one is the patient transfer assistance, and the second one is the mobility assistance, and the third one is the toilet assistance, and the fourth one is the protection of a patient with dementia, and the last area is the bathing assistance, and we support the development and interaction of these robots in the market. And some robots have completed the de development and now in the market. As the robots become more intelligent and work with humans, safety aspects become very important. International Safety Standard ISO 13482 for personal care robots was published in February 2014. The Japanese government is promoting the early release of robots by this safety certification. Robot suits HAL, HAL, and CALBET were certif certified under this ISO. In the process of taking certification of ISO, verification tests were needed, and we established the International Robot Safety Center in Japan in order to conduct those tests. This is a, a detailed image of Robot Safety Center. In Robot Safety Center, robot companies can implement 15 kinds of tests, including strength tests, durability tests, and so on. Therefore, the Robot Safety Center is the hub institute for robot verification. There are four testing areas in this center. First one is the traveling safety test area. Robot company will perform inclined floor tests, and so on. And the second test area is the collision and tip over test area. And the robot company will have a crash test and a tipping over test in this center. And the third one is a mechanical test area. And the robot company can perform durability tests and mechanical shock tests and so on. And the last one is the uh, EMC, electromagnetic compatibility test area. And the robot company can measure operational changes in the robots when they are exposed to strong electric waves and electromagnetic noise from the robots while they are operating. Next, I'll explain the robot test field. We will open this robot test field for public use in fiscal year of 2018. It is expected to serve as a major demonstration test site for various field robots and drones for delivery, disaster response, and infrastructure inspection, and so on. Expected area is about 50 hectare and 120 acres. Robot companies, academic institutions, as well as the robot users can test and evaluate the performance of robots and UAVs in this field. 
This site could be the ideal place for drone demonstration, especially just because there is 13 kilometer long this airspace above no residents and no factories in operation between test site and drone, and drone port can be used unlike other places. In addition to such geographical or physical advantage, we will install various facilities for testing infrastructure inspection, such as industrial plants, bridges, and tunnels. These mock-up facilities are essential for demonstration with a similar condition to real activity. The robot test field and its facilities are under construction. However, UTM demonstrations have already conducted in Fukushima. The first demonstration was conducted on March 2017, and the next one will be operated on the end of this month. In October's demonstration, several UAS service provider systems will be integrated. We always welcome possible participation from abroad in UTM demonstrations in Fukushima Prefecture. This is the overview of the robot strategy and the policy and measures under the strategy. Now let's move on to the World Robot Summit, which is a major policy under the strategy. World Robot Summit is planned to be held in Japan in 2020. I'd like to address our policy utilizing robots competition as an innovation vehicle with the aim to implement robots in real society, life, and industry and accelerate the research and development of robots. First of all, I'll show the concept movie of World of Summit. Efficiency, safety, collaboration. Engineers and scientists throughout the world are entrusting the dreams of humanity to the future of robots. While they may seem to be in competition, these minds actually work in solidarity. One person's ideas inspire another's, and one person's technology makes another's technology possible. Robotics is like another form of life with which we share this planet, and it's growing little by little every day. The goal of this challenge is simple, the welfare of humanity that each and every person in this world can share their lives with robots and find happiness like never before. In 2018 and again in 2020, the world's engineers and scientists will gather in Japan. They will come to discuss the new future being created today and to create new forms of happiness. The World of Summit is a combination of robot competition and trade show that brings together the world's latest technologies in robots field. And our ultimate goal to achieve is a world where robots and human beings live and work together. Uh, here is the concept of this event, Robotics for Happiness. As the present presence of robotics is getting bigger in our daily lives, we want to work Toward a, future, toward a future where they are not a threat to us, but partners in enhancing our lives, uh, helping those in need, and building a happier world. The summit mainly consists of two parts, robot competition and exhibition. In the competition part, World Robot Challenge, we call, uh, we'd like to bring together the best and latest robot technologies around the world. And we is 
we set the four categories under this uh, world of challenge, industrial, service, disaster robotics, and students. In the execution part, we display and demonstrate real-world applications of robotics from around the world. Here is a schedule towards the 2020. METI and NEDO plan to host the summit in August and October 2020 in Aichi Prefecture and Fukushima Prefecture. We also have a World Summit 2018 in Tokyo uh, from uh, one year later from now. It's a pre-event for 2020. And we invite extinguished professors, experts, and business people from around the world as our advisory board. Dr. Kanade chairs the board and Dr. Christensen, Dr. Gilbert, and Dr. Kitano, and the astronaut Yamazaki are the members of this board. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there are four categories in the robot challenge. The idea is to have robots compete in more practical real-world context rather than in an artificial environment. Let me overview one by one. First one is the industrial robotics category. This category aims at realizing future, realizing future manufacturing system that can respond to changing orders by reconfiguring the system in agile and lean manners. In World of Summit 2018, challenges will assemble a belt drive unit plus supplies parts. In this category, participants will compete quick and accurate assembly of model products and respond to changing orders automatically. This is the image of industrial robotics category. And the second one is the service robotics category. This category consists of two challenges, partner robot challenge and future convenience store challenge. This category aims for the realization of future home and future convenience stores and to realize its core component, which is work through collaboration and communication between humans and robots. The Partner Robot Challenge sets three tasks, which are guiding, hearing, and assisting. This challenge utilizes human support robot created by Toyota Corporations as the standard robot platform. And this category also has a simulation league. Participants will compete the total score of required tasks, such as navigation, interactive, cleanup, and so on. All tasks will be done, will be done by simulator robots. And this category, category has the future convenience store challenge, and this is the world's first competition to implement service robots available at convenience stores. The challenge sets tasks to help works in small retail stores, such as self shelf stocking and disposing of various products. Also, participants will compete customer interaction task and toilet cleaning task. This is the image of service robotics category. And the third category is the disaster robotics category. This category considers problem solving in the areas of infrastructure, disaster prevention, and response, and aims to achieve particularly difficult tasks, such as plant disaster prevention and tunnel disaster response using robots. In plant disaster prevention challenge, robots conduct inspection and maintenance of plant infrastructure. Participants will complete the tasks, such as opening valves, for the detection and disaster response. This challenge uses real plant facility built in the robot test field, as I mentioned before. And the second challenge is the tunnel disaster response challenge. This challenge sets tasks such as traveling obstacles, vehicle inspection, fire extinguish, and shoring and breaching. Platform robot will be used. And also, this challenge uses a real tunnel facility built in the robot test field. And this is the world's first competition to deal with the tunnel disaster. And the third challenge is the standard disaster robotics challenge. Under this challenge, we will assess the standard performance levels required in disaster prevention and responses. Through implementing this challenge, we hope to complement standard performance test method uh, collaborating with NISTO of US government. This is the image of the disaster robotics category. And lastly, junior category 
is for the students under 19 years old. And School Robot Challenge lets students to imagine and create robots useful in school environment. This challenge utilizes PEPPER, by, created by SoftBank Corporation as a standard robot platform. The second one is the Home Robot Challenge, which has tasks similar to the Partner Robot Challenge in the service category. This is an image of junior category. And the exhibition part of World Summit is organized with the same themes in the competition part. These are industrial service and the disaster robotics field. And this is a summary chart of eight challenges under the World Robot Challenge. We hope World of Summit becomes a truly international open innovation platform for robotics field. And to conclude my presentation, firstly, we focus on strategic area and formulate a workable plan. And secondly, we steadily advance the new robot strategy, centering on the robot revolution intensive initiative. Moreover, in order to implement robotics in real daily life, and accelerate R&D of robots, we utilize World of Summit as an innovation vehicle. As a result, we think World of Summit will lead to disseminate use cases of robots in tackling various social issues. Thank you for your kind attention, and thank you very much.